Hey, this is Jamie at Useful Knowledge. Well, this is an update video to a video that we put out several years ago named Canning Tomatoes Without a Pressure Cooker and No Water Bath. Now, we don't do anything any differently than we did back then. I still use the open kettle method for canning tomatoes, and I have my entire adult life for well over 30 years. So what do we update in this video? Number one, as requested by a lot of folks, we turn down the music. And number two, we do a little bit more explaining about the canning process. So stay tuned. So I've picked a lot of tomatoes this week. I also have another bucket about this size to bring in. So I'm gonna to can tomatoes today and I'm gonna answer questions that I've received over the past few years since I put out my first tomato canning video. Okay, the first thing we need to do is peel the tomatoes. So what I like to do is to place the tomatoes in the refrigerator overnight then I get them out and I place them in a pot of almost boiling water. It's only going to take about two to three minutes for those peels to start wrinkling and you know it's time to pull the tomatoes out and they will peel really easy at that point. Now I've had a lot of questions over the years and people get really upset about it saying don't put your tomatoes in the refrigerator. I've never ever had an issue. I've canned myself for 30 years and growing up we did it like that so I've never had an issue with that. So. I wouldn't worry about putting your tomatoes in the refrigerator overnight before you peel these. That's what we're going to do now. And I just fill this up until the water's about to come out of it and we'll let these go for a couple of minutes and we'll do another batch here in a minute. Okay, I'm taking our tomatoes out. These have been in probably about at least probably five minutes and the peels are starting to split. And I want to show you what I'm talking about when they start to split. So I'm just going to tack that with a knife. What I want to show you is how easy it is to peel these. See that right there? How easy it is to peel these once they've been in the water for just a few minutes. So that peel is going to come right off. We're just going to pull all these out. Now, it's okay to let them cool down. I've got to do another batch. It's okay to let these cool down before you start cutting them up because you don't want to burn yourself. I've been asked that question over the years as well. So we're just going to go back with these cold tomatoes here and get those ready to peel. Now that water is going to get dirty because these tomatoes do come from the outside. Don't worry about it. It's not going to harm you. All right. We'll let that batch get ready and we'll just keep going. Okay, I got another pot of hot water going so that I could double up on my process and I'm going to show you what I ended up with. I have a lot of tomatoes to process. I'm going to show you what that hot water does to those peels. Those peelings are just going to fall off real easy. Okay, we're going to get started. I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, I'm over at my sink. So first of all, I clean my sink really well. So over here on the left, I've got a big stainless steel bowl that I'm going to cut up my tomatoes in. Over here is going to be for my remnants, things like skins, cores, anything like that that I don't like. I'm going to throw them over here so I can keep them separated. What I do to process the tomato is I core it out first. And then I pull the peeling. If you do that process with the hot water correctly, that peeling will just come right off. Okay, at this point I just cut it up. And yes, all my juice is falling down in here. People ask me that all the time about the juice. Yes, let the juice fall down in the bowl because you're going to use that juice when you're boiling the tomatoes later. We're just going to keep going. Okay, one thing to show you, if you do have some weird spots, <clears throat> just cut around them. And anything that just doesn't look right to you, I always cut the end off there. But if something doesn't look right to you, just cut it off. Like there's a little spot right here, I just cut those off. And just keep peeling and keep cutting them up until you get done. Okay, since we've got a large mixing bowl ready to be transferred over to our cooking pot, what I do now is I actually measure how much I have. 
And the reason I do that is I will know exactly how many jars to get ready to use for canning. Like right there, that's a little over a quart. And I'm just going to transfer that over. So I know I've got one quart. Just keep doing this until you get them all in your cooking pot. Okay, based on the amount of tomatoes that you measured out to go into your pot, you need to put that many jars in the oven. I have 12 quarts to can, so I've got 12 quarts here on this pan. We're going to turn the oven on to 250 degrees, and the jars need to be in that oven for at least 15 minutes to get up to temperature. Okay, I measured out 12 quarts of tomatoes to can right now. I've got these turned on to medium to medium low. The goal here is to heat these up slowly. You don't want to scorch any of your tomatoes. You work really hard, heat them up slowly. Okay, for the next step, I'm placing 12 mason jar lids into a small pot of water, and I'm gonna turn that on to a low to medium low. I don't want them really boiling, but I, I, I do want them warming up. Okay, while our tomatoes are slowly warming up, I wanna have a canning method discussion with you. So you can look this up, there's three different canning methods. There is a pressure canning method, and that's mainly for non-acidic items that are on the pH scale of above 4.5. Those items would be things like green beans, any type of peas, any type of, any type of beans, and even potatoes. Anything 4.5 and below can be canned with the water bath method or if you want to use what I use, which is the open kettle method, they can be canned with the open kettle method. Now the open kettle method is a true canning method that was popular up until the mid 80s when the water bath method became recommended. Now what I think is the key, and this is a personal opinion, to the open kettle method is to make sure you get the hot tomatoes into the hot jars and get the lid on quickly. If you don't, you won't get a seal. I don't know if that's why the method fell out of favor, but if you don't do this quickly, you won't get a good seal. It's really simple to do, but you, you must do it quickly. You can't let your tomatoes sit there and cool down before you put them in the jar and seal it up. Okay, something else I get asked all the time is, can I add carrots, can I add onions, can I add other things like celery or even potatoes to the tomatoes and can them this way? The answer is no. If you add things like onions, carrots, celery, things like that, you're going to reduce the overall acidity of the mixture and it's going to require pressure canning. It's not going to matter if it's open kettle or water bath. If you get that mixture up to the point where it's over 4.5, on the pH scale is going to require pressure canning. So I always say, go ahead and can your tomatoes and when you get ready to, is make your soup fresh. And we actually have a video on our channel about making soup and I'm using one of my jars of tomatoes. Okay, to clear something up on the video that I did several years ago, I said in that video something like bring it up to the simmer point. Now, that's the boiling point. That's just a term that I used you can bring this up to the boiling point. The whole key with what I was trying to explain there is you want this whole pot simmering. You want it, the whole pot at the boiling point. Okay. Now, I don't want to cook this. I want it up to boiling and then I want to can it. So once these get hot, we're going to demonstrate it. Okay, so this pot is almost at the boiling point. I'm going to ease it up just a little bit in temperature to go ahead and and make sure it gets up there quickly now and the whole pot is at the boiling point okay so this entire pot is at the boiling point now I've got some of the skim off of it some years I have skim some years I don't if you do get some skim some of that foaming go ahead get that out of there this is ready as well as our other pots they're ready to go so we're gonna show you the open kettle canning process that I use now, if you don't want to use that, that's fine. You can use the water bath canning method, or if you want to, pressure can them, whatever you'd like to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to a complete low while I get my jars out of the oven. Okay, well, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the hot tomatoes into the hot jars quickly. If 
you don't want to use this method, that's fine. I would recommend the water bath method to you if you'd like to use that. Or if you feel really uncomfortable, even with those methods, use by all means use the pressure canning method. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. These are your tomatoes. Okay, what I'd like to do is bring that right up to the bottom of my canning funnel. I'm just going to keep adding tomatoes to my jars. Okay, once I got these full where I want them, I'm going to add a teaspoon of non-iodized salt. You can use canning salt. I just use natural sea salt. It's non-iodized. Okay, what I want to do now is go through and wipe each lid. This is a damp paper towel and you can see I got a little tomato already on there. This is just to get that lid clean. That's all I'm doing here. I want the best seal possible. Okay now I'm gonna put the lids on. Everybody always asks me about this. I dry the lids. This really bothers people. However, when you turn over your jar of tomatoes that's going to kill anything that may have gotten on that lid during the whole canning process. That's why you do that in the open kettle canning process. Okay, now all we have to do is get our lids on. Now people do comment on how tight I put the lids on. It's not going to hurt to go ahead and tighten these up. You're not doing any other processing. This is it. So you can tighten them up pretty tight. Okay, at this point we're going to tighten these lids on down and we're going to turn each one of these jars over. Now, if you've got some tomatoes or anything, obviously you need to wipe that up. You don't want to turn them over into that. Tighten them up. Turn them over. We're going to do these all the way back and we're going to leave them turned upside down for five minutes. Okay, these have been upside down for five minutes and we're just going to turn them right side up. And as these cool down, they will seal. Most of the time, you will hear them ping. And they are still very hot, so be careful. And you heard one of them already sealed. That doesn't happen. This guy right here has already sealed. Doesn't happen often like that but it does happen and we'll just let all the rest of these cool down and seal okay it's the next morning and all of our jars are perfectly sealed so we hope you enjoyed our update video and you gained some useful knowledge on how to can tomatoes without a pressure cooker and no water bath Thanks for watching and have fun canning tomatoes.